Having a built-to-fit planter box is a fun and easy way to add curb appeal to your house. I'm going to give you easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions on how you can build your own custom planter box using the Simpson Strong Tie Workbench Kit. This is DIY done right. So to make this planter box, we're going to go ahead and use the Simpson Strong Tie Workbench Kit. Now this has the same components that are used in a number of different projects. And let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the box. We've got some wood screws, some connector screws, an inspiration book, the instructions for many, many projects that you can build with this, and the amazing RTC 2Z rigid connector. Now this is going to be the main component that we're going to use in this planter box. So we're going to use four of these, even though the package comes with eight. So we're going to take these out and move the other four to the side. So let's talk about the tools that you're going to need for this project. There's not many, but we'll go through them. Now you will need to purchase two additional fasteners for this project. The first one being the Simpson Strong Tie Strong Drive SD Connector Screw and the Deck Drive DSV Wood Screw. The type of lumber we're going to use for this project is redwood. It's an exterior grade wood, it weathers really nicely, and it holds up over time. Now, the cut list that you're going to need for this project, three 1x8x6 by by foot fence boards, three 8 foot 2x4s, and one 8 foot 2x2. Two two. So I'm going to go ahead and put my sleepers up on my workbench so I don't cut up my workbench. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and start cutting the legs for the planter box. We've got our legs, our side rails, and our front and back rails. So we're going to move those off to the side right now and focus on the legs. We need to put our connectors four and a half inches up from the bottom of each of these. So the easiest way to do that is to group them all together and mark them all at once. So we'll mark there and there. You can mark both of them at once, move it to the other side, match it up. The screws that we're going to use for the connectors are the Strong Drive SD connector screws. Now these are rated for exterior use and if you choose to do so, you can use treated lumber for the project and they're rated for that as well. We are going to use a hex bit for this, so we're going to go ahead and load that in our screw gun. I'm going to put the connectors in all four corners. We're going to go ahead and put the pieces in there and there. Use our clamp, get nice and tight. All right, so let's go ahead and assemble one side, assemble the other side, and then we'll connect them with the front and the back rails. Now we have our two sides completed. So let's bring in our front rail and our back rail. Our inner frame is now complete. The next thing we need to do is put the wrapping, the shell of the planter box on. And we're going to go ahead and cut the end pieces, which are exactly 16 inches in length. The next step is we're going to attach that to the sides of our planter. So make sure that's nice and even. And for this, we're going to be using the Deck Drive DSV wood screws. So I've cut the two by two for the top. So we're going to go ahead and put this in here. Nice fit. And make sure that it is flush with the top. There we go. So that's done. Let's go ahead and cut the pieces for our sides. Measure twice, cut once. So let's go ahead and put these side pieces on. There we go. Once that's installed, let's move right on to installing the cap supports for the long rails. Thank you. 
We need to install the floor of the planter box before we attach the last two by two top cap support. So we're gonna go ahead and take this and put it off to the side for the moment. I'm actually gonna use my planter box as a nice support to cut the three 16 inch bottom slats. And there's one odd piece, which I'll go through with you in just a second. Checked fit. Beautiful. All right, I've cut the last bottom piece for the planter. And if you'll notice, the last piece only needs to be about half of the size of this board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rip this board down to the appropriate length. Now there's a difference between cross cut, which is a cut that goes across the wood to a rip, which is going the length of the board. Measure it to the appropriate length that you need or width on both ends. Take a piece of scrap, line it up with those two marks, and run a line. That's where you're gonna wanna cut. All right, we did it. <laughs> it's a pretty good fit. So the bottom is almost done. We're gonna go ahead and screw these down to the frame and we're gonna drill some drainage holes in here so the moisture has somewhere to go. And after that, we'll attach the two by two top cap support and then start working on the top cap. All right, the holes for the bottom of the planter box are drilled. You don't have to go through this step and buy the spade bit if you don't have it. What you can do is cut the last piece, the one that we ripped, about a half an inch shorter and then put a gap between all of the bottom pieces. That way the water will have somewhere to go and you didn't have to drill holes. So let's go ahead and finish up the supports for the top cap. Let's get to work on the top cap. What we're gonna need is a piece of the two by four that's at least eight inches longer than the inside measurement. And that's the point from here to here. And we're gonna clamp it down to the inside top cap support. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our framing square. And you notice it's got the nice straight edge that I've been using in the project to mark off things, but it also has a nice 45 degree angle. And we're gonna use that as a guide to go ahead and cut all of our miter cuts, along with the clamp. There you go, looks pretty good. This part, let's dry fit it to the inside corner. Line it up nice and right. And then what I'm gonna do is make a pencil mark right at the inside corner of the other side. I'm gonna take my framing square and transfer this line to the top of my board. Once it's there, I'm gonna go ahead and make another little mark right there. And that's gonna be where I want my miter cart cut to start. And it always helps me to make sure you don't get this wrong. You don't put this on the wrong side and end up doing the same cut on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and make just a little mark in the waist that I'm gonna go that way, just like that. Let's check how we did. So now we have a piece that goes edge to edge on the inside corner. And we're gonna repeat this for the other side and then we'll cut the shorter lengths to fit just in between the gaps that are left. All right, I have my two long pieces of my top cap cut. So let's go ahead and attach those. Make sure you line it up real nice and tight to that inside corner. There. 
So all that's left to do is take the exact measurement from here to here and do the same process with cutting the side end top caps. So I've completed the end pieces of our top cap and all I have to do is screw them down and we've completed our project. Okay. And the last screw and you are done. You've completed a very useful planter box that you'll be able to enjoy for some time to come. Available now at the Home Depot.